is Malika Noko, and I received a SARE grant for my graduate research. Um, I'm working on a PhD at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and uh, my degree program is through the Nelson Institute for Environmental Studies, and the actual program is um, in environment and resources. So I, we are standing in the Wisconsin Central Sands, and uh, here's my map of Wisconsin, and it's in the center of the state, and it is a um, a region that is characterized by the sandy soils. Um, it, and the sandy soils were caused by uh, the movement of the, glac the glaciers and like a, a catastrophic draining event of the glacial Lake Wisconsin. And uh, because of that, the soils, they, they don't hold a lot of water, they don't hold a lot of nutrients, and this is the prime region in Wisconsin where irrigated agriculture is, is taking place. And uh, this is a potato field towards the end of its life. It'll actually be killed in about a week from now. So you can see it's already started to senesce on its own. Um, and potatoes are one of the main irrigated crops in this region. And what I'm currently doing is looking at how irrigation at this scale, because it is, it is a, large, a relatively large scale in a concentrated region. It's about five, um, it's, a, it's thousands of high capacity wells um, in this area. And there have been in the past 10 years or so, some surface water stress of the, the streams and the lakes uh, in this region. And there's a lot of, you know, high quality trout streams. So basically there's a conservation um, community dilemma here. People are upset um, and people are upset about water. So um, the positive part of that is people are interested in managing water. So really I have, I would say, a few main goals of my PhD. One is to just try to understand and characterize the water budget from these irrigated agroecosystems. And uh, I'm using a few different approaches to do that. And what the SARE grant has helped me to do is install this, which it, it's not it's not super impressive because you cannot see what's underground, but it's a passive capillary wick lysimeter. So you just have to believe me that right in this region, about eight feet underground, there is an instrument that measures drainage, vertical drainage. Um, and that is a very challenging thing to measure. And uh, as you can imagine, it was a very challenging thing to install. Um, and it has about a, a 10 inch diameter and there are 25 of them in different crop, in six different cropping systems on this farm. And so th that is capturing drainage. And then we have several um, meteorological stations that are capturing MET variables. I don't think you can't see at any of the full MET stations right now. Um, and we have stratified soil moisture and temperature probes all the way up. So basically we're measuring everything we can, um, including precipitation and irrigation to back into evapotranspiration, um, which is, the main issue at hand is the hypothesis is irrigated agriculture is in, in increasing consumptive groundwater use because we are irrigating the plants until they don't need any more water so they can transpire at the, the highest rates possible. Um, and it's just a challenge to measure evapotranspiration. So that's kind of step one. Um, and I, I'm basically trying to, the lysimeters are one of three ways that I'm trying to characterize evapotranspiration and then the drainage is considered potential groundwater recharge. So that's the other part that I'm working on. Um, you can kind of see if you look across, there are these white, um, these white sensors on a post. Do you kind of see the line of them? Yep. So this, that's like a, it's a temperature and relative humidity transect across this field. And it kind of gets at the second um, area that I'm focusing my work on, which is what is the relationship between irrigated agriculture and regional climate? Um, we know from data and studies out west where it is very arid that these concentrated regions of irrigated agriculture can actually shift climate patterns um, through irrigated cooling. Um, so you can have warmer nights and cooler days in these regions. So we're curious, everyone's always said it's too humid for that to happen in the Midwest. So we're testing that hypothesis, um, both at the local scale. So what this transect is measuring is when the actual center pivot goes over it, what is the temperature decline and the relative humidity rise associated with that? And that's one of those things that if we can understand that effect, we can build better models. Um, I also have a similar transect 
that is at a larger regional scale. So every two kilometers through the, the, the fattest portion of the central sands that's irrigated, I have one of these sensors to look at how this is manifesting at you know, that regional scale. So like this is more of a mechanistic understanding and that's just to see are, you, you know, more of a proof of concept as to if we're seeing this in the region. So that's, that's the other part, um, major part of my work. So really, I'm trying to measure what I can measure and then um, build better models. That, that's, that's really the next, the next step. So that's what I'm working on. And I, I thank you all for, for your funding and I really appreciate it. And hopefully I will have some very you know, interesting results to report. Uh, so there's a reservoir that sits at about eight feet below the surface and that, that collects the drainage water. And because the soil is so sandy, we make an assumption that all of the flow is vertical. That's a, to any, the physicists maybe know that that is a huge assumption to make um, because you know, any soil scientist will tell you that there's lateral flow that happens in the soil. But, bec but the soil in this case is so sandy that it's fairly safe to make that assumption. However, the point at which we are collecting drainage, it basically has this um, fiberglass wick material that maintains like a constant soil water tension or potential that keeps it so that that spot is equivalent to about field capacity for a sand. So you're collecting drainage at about field capacity. So I'm gonna pump out the drainage. Hopefully we've got some. All right, there it is.